I got pregnant with his baby. So break up with me. Sorry, that's how it is. I'll take care of Kaede, so give it up. I've been busy with work. I managed to free up some time and headed to meet with my girlfriend. But what I saw was her being hugged on the shoulder by my best friend. Huh? Wait a minute. Why are you guys together? Sorry, me and Akuda Kun have been dating the whole time. The whole time? If you liked Akuda, why didn't you dump me right away? You know, I like you because you're kind, but you're always so busy, and I don't get to see you at all. I was feeling lonely, and that's when Akuda Kun approached me. I thought it would hurt you if I told you the truth, but today I finally made up my mind. Or you only came clean just because you couldn't hide it anymore. I never thought she would cheat on me. Kaede chose me by her own will. You should reflect on your own behavior of leaving her alone until now. It's true that I haven't been able to see you because I've been busy with work. I'm sorry. But that doesn't justify cheating on me. I'm shocked. I know. I'm sorry for hurting you, Leo. <gasps> That's enough. I'll never get involved with you two again. I wish you all the best. I lost my best friend and my girlfriend at the same time. The shock was too much for me, and a few days passed. The shock comes later doubled. Devastated. I couldn't get up for a while. My name is Leo Chitose. I'm 30 and my best friend stole my girlfriend. I didn't even feel like getting angry, but the sadness will never go away. So I came to a hot spring resort for a change of pace, perfect for a heartbreak trip. But there's no point in worrying about it, and it makes me feel sick to think those two are enjoying themselves while I'm feeling down. Um, excuse me? Yes? Is something wrong? The person who spoke to me was a woman who looked a little younger than me. Um, I can't find the exit of the station. I didn't know they were doing renovations. Oh yeah. I heard they're gonna add more stores. I'm heading to a place called Ryokan Koi Nagomi. Oh, that's where I'm headed too. You can follow me if you like. Though, it's my first time there too. After she thanked me, we introduced ourselves to each other. She says her name is Tart Sakazaki, a unique name. It seems her parents owned that Ryokan, Koi Nagomi, and she hasn't gone back there in two years. I was surprised to see the station had changed so much. It happens, doesn't it? When I went back to my hometown the other day, I was surprised to see so many skyscrapers too. Oh, thank God Chitose-san was here to help me. Please let me thank you properly when we get to the inn. Uh, no, no. It wasn't a big deal. Don't worry about it. But when we reached the Ryokan, the receptionist greeted us in a frenzy. Before I knew it, I was being ushered into the back room to meet the owners, Tart's parents. Oh, I'm so glad Tart has a boyfriend. Is this a marriage report? Oh, I'm Tart's mother, Chiyoko. This is my husband, Senbeth. He's quiet and expressionless, but he's very happy right now. Um, sorry. I'm not her boyfriend. You're mistaken. Mom is always hasty. I'm sorry, Chitose-san. Oh dear, I've misunderstood again. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Oh, don't worry about it. Then a sliding door was opened vigorously, and a large man came in. Who's Tart's boyfriend? I'm gonna have you killed and sliced alive! Ah? Uh? Oh my gosh, you're so energetic. This is my son, Monaka. Tart's brother. I'm gonna find out if you're worthy of being Tart's boyfriend! Now get up! You're going to start by cleaning the kitchen! Why? I'm not her boyfriend to begin with! Ah! Oh. Not listening. In spite of my resistance, I was dragged toward the kitchen. I'm on a trip, though. I was handed a chef's gown and reluctantly changed into it, and immediately began my work. Hey, clean up! Oh, it's done? Then, the vegetable prep! I'm almost done! Huh? Oh, it's pretty good. Well, then do the other preparations. Oh, that too? Okay, fine. I'll do it! You can do that too? What the heck? You were a cook? Uh, no, I'm a butler at a hotel. I was a cooking assistant for a bit, though. Uh, Chitose-san can cook? That's a 
wonderful skill. So what's a batora? Do you battle or something? That sounds very dangerous. Of course not. Well, to put it simply, I do whatever chores I'm ordered to do. In other words, my brother has taken a liking to you thanks to the skills you've developed. Oh yeah, he's good. You should marry him after all, Tart. <laughs> Before I knew it, their parents took a liking to me. Leo Kun, the misunderstanding is cleared up so you don't have to work anymore. I'll give you free lodging and you can get some rest. I feel better to be working than staying still, actually. Besides, it's fun. Oh yeah? I guess I'll have you join us as a member of the Sakazaki family for today's interview then. Hey mom! Don't tease him so much! An interview? Someone's coming? Yes. An editor and a writer from the publishing company I work for are coming. They're going to put the article in the magazine. I wanted to do it myself, but the editor said I can't write for my own family. Well, I guess that's fair. They're already here, and they're waiting for us in the dining room. Leo Kuhn, could you offer them some tea? Sure. Well, I guess I'll go too. When I bring tea, there's a couple talking amicably. Yono-senpai! Miko-chan! Thanks for coming! Tart talks to them in a friendly manner. To my surprise, the man was my former best friend, Akuda Yono. I had heard that he was an editor at a publishing company, but I never thought we would run into each other here. You two are so close even though you're here on business. <laughs> I heard rumors in the office, but... Are you two actually dating? The woman nods happily at Tart's question and shows the pair ring on her ring finger. Don't tell me he's got Kaede pregnant and then had an affair with her? That's too terrible! Then Akuda noticed me and quickly became pale. He looks like he wants to say, Why are you here? I put the tea down and went right back to the kitchen. I was having a great time working here. They ruined it. But I'm not going to say anything. This is their problem now. Leoku? Tartsan looks like she's wondering something happened to me. Do you know my senpai by any chance? You both had troubled looks on your faces, didn't you? Uh, well, we were friends in college, but we recently broke off her friendship. <gasps> I... I didn't know that. The world is small, isn't it? You know, I lost a lot of confidence in myself after what happened with them. I've always put work first, so I must have seemed like a boring person to Kaede too. Is it wrong to put work first? It's up to each person to decide whether or not they want to focus on work or personal life. It's true that differences in thinking can cause problems, but you can't blame yourself for it. You know, I decided to work at this inn in the near future. Some people were against it, but I don't care. You can be confident in yourself and keep what's important to you, Leo Kuhn. Be yourself. I see. Thank you, Tart. You've cheered me up a bit. After the interview was over, Akuda left quickly and the day ended without any problems. The long weekend passed in a flash, and it was time to go home. Thanks for everything, Leo Kun. I'll message you soon, so give me a reply, okay? Also, they've been talking about being my boyfriend and stuff. Actually, I don't mind. Oh, what? Do you mean? Surprising, right? It's only been three days, but seriously, please think about it. She softly confessed her feelings for me and I head at home. It was a lot of unexpected things, but I had a great time. After that, Tart and I kept in touch, and a month later, we decided to go on a day trip to the hot springs. Leo Kun, long time no see! Tart, I'm sorry for keeping you waiting. Thanks for inviting me today. Meeting five minutes before is the basic rule, right, Leo? I won't tolerate you being rude to Tart. I told him to stay behind, but he wouldn't listen. My brother is a siscon. Uh, I see. It must have been a long way from your parents' house, though. The inn Tart brought me to was spacious and recently renovated, so it was very clean. I've never been to a ryokan for a day trip before. It's great to be able to enjoy both the hot springs and the food. Yes, it is. It's our rival ryokan, so I have to study it closely. Plus, this place is popular with couples. I feel like I shouldn't be here. It was featured in our magazine and all my colleagues have been there, so I've been curious. Colleagues, I have a bad feeling about this. 
Huh? Why are you here? And there they are, as expected. Akuda Yono and my ex, Kaede Mitsashi. Just as I thought. Huh? Oh well. But I didn't know you were dating Sakazaki. You're quite a player too. Going out with her as soon as you got dumped. No, we're not dating yet. Hey, you shouldn't date Leo Kun. Because he's always working and leaves you alone. Akuda Kun always prioritizes my schedule. And he takes care of all the finances. Isn't that great? Leo Kun, on the other hand, has to work tomorrow again, right? Well, sure. That's why we were taking a day trip today. See? I knew it. The service industry pays low wages and doesn't give you days off. It's not a good job. I think a man with good income and stability is the best. Don't you think so? No? My family runs a ryokan, so I'm used to not having holidays. Besides, you shouldn't look down on the service industry. Who do you think makes it possible for you guys to use the ryokan? Yono-senpai, you've been looking down on the people you interview. That's unfortunate. Hey, I didn't say anything! And speaking of high income, Leo is pretty awesome too! Huh? Leo is a butler for billionaires, you know? He makes well over 10 million yen a year! What? Um, I didn't want that to be known. He works for a luxury hotel, and he's so trusted by his guests that he's always asked to be their personal butler. He's so popular that he gets special treatment and high salary! That's my man! Why are they bragging about it? Why didn't you tell me? Then you would have been much better than a Kudakun! What? Well, it's true that Leo's income is higher than mine, but... Well, Kaede is bad at keeping secrets, so I was gonna tell you if he got married. Then I'll break up with a Kudakun! Get back together with me! No way! In the first place, you're having a baby with Akuda, right? You have to be responsible for that! That was a lie. Akuda-kun told me that you would give up on me right away if I told you that. What the heck? That's the worst on so many levels. Leo, you have a terrible eye for women. Monaka is weirded out by how crazy they are. And I wish he didn't blame me for choosing Kaede. By the way, Yono-senpai, you're dating Miko-chan, right? I don't remember polygamy being allowed in Japan. Huh? What? Akuda-kun, what does this mean? Oh, um, wh what are you talking about? <laughs> then the phone slips out of Akuda's hand. Oh, you dropped it, senpai. You got a message. Wait, wait, don't pick it up. Don't look at it. Miko-chan and <gasps> Jaren-chan. What? Three at a time? No, no, we were just talking about work. I love you too. Let's have a crazy night tomorrow. Ugh, what? Whoa, it's kind of getting interesting in a way. <laughs> what does this mean? I can't believe it. Wait, listen to me. There's a reason for this. Shut up. I should have never exchanged numbers with you at the party. I missed out on a high income boyfriend. We were so fed up that we decided to leave them. They're just gonna self-destruct. Let's go. It's a waste of time. I'll just tell Miko-chan about this. Later, it was discovered that Akuda actually had five girlfriends. Kaede was only one of them. The five women fought fiercely, and in the end, all the blame was on Akuda. Miko, in particular, was the daughter of the president of the company where Akuda worked, so Akuda was forced to resign. His fiancé also demanded an alimony, and an Akuda, who was a spendthrift, became completely destitute. He asked me to lend him money, but I ignored the message and blocked it. Kaede also sent me a message asking me to get back together with her, but I ignored that as well. Hey, Chitose-kun. I heard you're quitting being a butler. Are you serious? Oh yeah. I just told them that I'm interested in working at the Ryokan where my girlfriend is. Working there was fun, and most importantly, I get to be with the person I love. No, but wait. You're going to lose your position as the number one butler in this luxury hotel. That's insane. Your income will be like close to nothing. I won't regret the choice I make. Well then, it's time for me to go. After finishing work, I rushed to the meeting place to meet my favorite girl. Leo, 
You're five minutes late. What are you thinking making your girlfriend wait? Sorry. I'll give you the best service, so forgive me. A number one butler's best service, huh? That sounds great. We laughed at each other saying that. I'm sure I'm gonna spend the rest of my life with her. And I don't care what others say about it. I will stay proud of what I do. My name's Sen Takekuma. I'm a 24-year-old salesman working for a major company. Okay, quotation sent. It took a while, but I think I can manage to go visit two clients this afternoon. My work is smooth sailing. I have a girlfriend whom I have been dating since high school. It's a good life. But then, there was a sudden turn of events. Heh, <laughs> you incompetence. Why can't you do what I want? Don't put the blame on me. You're the ones who should take responsibility, since you're below me. The president's daughter married a guy, and he became a board member. And a lot of employees started resigning. Moreover, he offended a number of major clients, and my company quickly went downhill and went bankrupt. But my misfortune didn't end here. I was dating you only because you work for a major company. But I can't go out with a jobless person. Let's break up. At the same time as the bankruptcy, my girlfriend, Miyako Hanazumi, dumped me. And there he was beside her. You're gonna work for a small company now? Poor you, Sen. It was Kuma Tanaichi, a man I thought was my best friend from the same university. The company went bankrupt, and my girlfriend was taken by Kuma. Huh. Oh, uh, <laughs> Tanaichi-kun, huh? I've heard rumors that he's a playboy, but he took your girlfriend, huh? Her name is Mika Kashimada. She's also a classmate of mine from the same college. When I was depressed, I happened to run into her in town, and she dragged me into an izakaya. Well, now I see why you look so depressed. But what are you going to do now? I don't know. I haven't thought about anything. I'll have to look for a new job. Hmm, then why don't you think about becoming a freelancer? My brother does it too, but he makes quite a bit of money, you know? Freelancer, huh? That suggestion might have been life-changing for me. A week later, I started studying about entrepreneurship. I've learned firsthand that even the big companies aren't safe in this day and age. No company can protect its employees. Then, you're on your own. The question is, what am I gonna do? It's been a month since I lost my job. I decided to rent a new office. It's not far from the station, and I can eat downstairs. I'm lucky that this place just happened to have one slot available. And they have an admin agency on the third floor. Maybe I'll ask your service too if I get busy. Well, what I started doing is... I'm now taking care of manufacturing maintenance of control panels for factories. Oh, that's great! I was wondering what to do when I heard about that company's sudden bankruptcy. My former company's business was building automation, or BAS. In short, we sell centralized management systems for everything from AC to electricity for buildings, with each system costing several hundred million yens. But it's difficult to sell on that scale, so I act as an agent for major manufacturers. We have old system, and when I switch it on, the power goes out for a moment. Is it a malfunction? Maybe noise runs through when you turn it on, so... Taking in customers who lost their supplier, that's what I do now. By the way, when I say I'm an agent, I'm not an exclusive distributor contracted by the manufacturer. I'm a self-declared agent, so I don't have any strict obligations. Ah, oh, I'm so tired. But I still have to call the manufacturer for the repairs. When I return to the office... You look tired. Being busy is good. Suddenly, the woman in the next booth spoke to me. Her name is Shizuku Hakoishi. She's the woman who rents the space next to mine. Unlike a sole proprietor like me, she seems to be the president of some company that she took over from her father who passed away. Hello, you're here again today? What about your company? It's okay, I can work more efficiently here, and the company can manage without me. Anyway, after you get your work done, why don't we grab dinner downstairs again? There's nothing worse than an incompetent worker. And so, we got our work done and went downstairs to the family restaurant. 
We have a late dinner and a light drink. We occasionally meet up here to complain about our work. With the price they set, there's no profit. Why would they give out discounts at their own discretion? There are a lot of complaints from Shizuku today. It seems that there's an employee in the sales department who doesn't listen to her. By the time two months have passed since then, I've been getting calls from clients I've visited. Something wrong with the communication equipment in the panel? It could be a disconnection. Are you in the neighborhood? Then would you mind if I visit your factory tomorrow and take a look at it? Repairing a control panel costs several tens of thousands of yen. For a new production, it's hundreds of thousands. Taking the margin from the manufacturer, I would only be able to barely get by like this. I wonder if there's anything more I can do. Hmm, then why don't you sell peripheral devices of control panels? I had dinner with Shizuku again today and discussed it with her, and that was the suggestion I got. Oh, I see. There are extension cables, touch panels, and so on. You shouldn't underestimate the demand for incidental purchases. People buy many things together with a main product just to avoid hassle. I don't think the demand is so small. What do you think? I see. And that suggestion turned out to be right on the money. I see. But I don't know what kind of cable or touch panel to choose. I would appreciate it if you could make a selection and sell it to me. When it comes to electrical matters, there are many people who have no knowledge. So now, I have more clients who buy many items at once. Thank you very much. I'll send you a quote later. And I finally got too busy to do the paperwork myself. So I hired an admin agency on the third floor to do it for me. I'd like you to handle vouchers and invoices. Sure, it's my pleasure. Thank you for signing the contract. Wow, you have quite a few clients. I'm glad to see your business is going well. <laughs> Thank you. When I finished my business and was about to return to my office, Ah, Tomoyura-san! She goes to the man and crosses her arms with his in a friendly manner. They look happy. Rumor has it that the sisters were fighting over the guy, but the little sister gave in. That's something to envy. I have no regrets for Miyako, but... There was a time like that for me too, wasn't there? Reunion? I ran into Mika again in town and went into an izakaya, and she told me about it. Yeah, for the college. It's been three years since we graduated. To be honest, there were only a few people I could reach, but what do you say? Hmm, I guess I'll go. Some days later, for some reason, Shizuku asked me to hear her story, so I went to see her. The office was quiet. I thought it was scary and eerie. Mrs. President. I was so surprised when he called out to me. He was there grinning at me. I don't know what it was, but I was scared, instinctively. But I couldn't run away. What is it? I asked him. Then he pulled out a piece of paper. It had some strange numbers on it. Please take a look at it, he said. And there was... A purchase order from a major client with zero profit. When I think of the expenses, it's actually a loss. Shizuku comes closer to me with a sad look. It seems that's what happened first thing in the morning. So, so close! Um, why did he come directly to you, the president? The department manager gave up on him and told him to come to me directly. Huh? Well, if he's that bad, can't you just fire him or something? It's difficult in this day and age, especially that type of person who will sue you if you fire him. I see. If it develops into a labor management problem, there's a high possibility that the company will incur more losses. I did warn him though. By the way, you're looking awfully casual today. Yeah, today. I was in the office just to do some admin stuff because I had the reunion in the evening. It's been a long time, everyone. We're reserving the restaurant for the whole night, so everyone who will be late is welcome to join us, too. We'll charge you a membership fee, though. <laughs> You're so calculative, huh? You didn't plan this reunion for the sake of sales, did you? Everyone enters the restaurant laughing and reminiscing and discussing recent events. And one after another, the alumni arrive late after finishing their work. Among them, there was that guy. Hey, it looks like you guys are doing well. Koma Taneichi. And, somehow, next to him was my ex, Miyako Hanazumi. I don't care about Koma, 
but why Miyako too? She didn't go to her college, did she? Oh shoot, who called such a guy here? He's the enemy of women. I don't like that guy. I mean, who is that woman next to him anyway? The women behind me are whispering to each other. Back then, I thought we were best friends. But now, I understand exactly how they feel. Well, I've got a big case to handle today. Oh, Sin is there too? Hey, how's it going? How are you doing after being fired from a major company? I wasn't fired. The company went bankrupt. Well, I'm doing well on my own. I responded calmly to the irritating remark. Maybe I shouldn't have said on my own. Oh, I was wondering what kind of a small company you will be going into. But you are an unstable freelancer now? That's funny. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So, why did you bring Miyako here? It's the unveiling of my fiancé. We are getting married. <laughs> she says I'm an elite and attractive. We, the two elites, are getting married to each other. We are from top rank universities. So we are perfect for each other, right? I sighed that he just came here to satisfy his self esteem. But Miyako is. Uh, well, whatever. Well, congratulations on that. Sin, for the love of my best friend, I'll invite you to the wedding! <laughs> A best friend? Oh, that sounds like a nasty reunion. Arrogant guys like that are everywhere. He used to be a better guy, but... The next day, I was telling Shizuku about yesterday's reunion. When I remember about it, I get frustrated. So, you're still going to attend the wedding? Well, even though they're bastards, they're my ex-best friend and ex-girlfriend. So I'm gonna see them one last time and say goodbye. I see. You can control your emotions well, huh? You're so mature, I'd love to have you in my team. Saying that, she stares at me. But it's not good to hold back too much, you know? You have to vent it out, okay? That's what I'm doing now, right? I appreciate you listening to me. Likewise. Hey, I have a suggestion. Business is going well, and what was even more of a turning point for me was when I visited this customer. Please do me a favor. I trust you and that's why I'm asking you for a favor. But that project is too big for me. And even if I could, I can only be an intermediary, you know? It's okay. Please do it for us. Your previous company went bankrupt and I asked another firm to handle the project, but they were really bad. Because of that, the project is on hold right now. If I get a strange contractor again, I'll lose my credibility. Uh, uh, let me think about it for a bit. A few days later, I decided to take the project. Oh, thank you very much. That's reassuring. I'm not an installer, but only an intermediary. In short, I'm in a position to supervise everything until installation is complete. The scale of this project is big, and so is the amount of money involved. The amount of money I have to pay first to the contractor is also huge. It's difficult for my small business to handle that, but it was Shizuku who encouraged me to do it. Do it. The plan is concrete, so I'm sure the bank will give you a loan. You have been a trustworthy customer for a long time, haven't you? If that end up being difficult, I'll give you a loan. You should take the job with confidence. You want to give it a shot, don't you? You have that kind of look on your face. That made me decide to take the job. In the middle of such a busy time, I received a wedding invitation from Koma and Miyako and attended the wedding. <laughs> Bless us! Today, on this day, an elite couple is born! Yeah, yeah. I looked at the number of attendees. Not many people other than family members were here. It was obvious, but they really don't have many friends, do they? Well, this is the last day I get involved with them too. Well, a year has passed since that hectic times. They wanted you to sell only communication and power cables. Can you give them a quote? Well, did you ask how wide the cables are supposed to be? He said 10 meters. Okay, 
Each lot is 100 meters, though. Well, I'll do something about it. The project a year ago brought me substantial profit and trust, so I expanded my business. I now rent a proper office and started hiring employees, but... <laughs> now you get it, huh? You want a place where you can work alone, right? I still rent the small office and sometimes work here. Oh, and next week we have to go to your parents' house, right? I'll have to adjust my work schedule. And so, I'm back at my parents' house on a weekend for the first time in a long time. It's still the same as ever. I was deeply moved to come to this area after so long, and I decided to take a walk. It was then that she approached me. Sen? Are you Sen Takekoma? Miyako? There she was, Miyako. Her belly's getting bigger. Is she pregnant? I never thought I'd meet you. As you can see, I'm pregnant and back at my parents' house. You are a freelancer, at the bottom of the pyramid, aren't you? How can you be slacking off here? Oh, sorry, a phone call. I received a call from my client. This is Takikoma, thank you for your business. Okay, another BAS? I appreciate your trust in me. Okay, I'll take care of it. I hung up the call. The client heard about me from another client, apparently. B-A-S? Wait, that's building automation, right? Isn't that a multi-million deal? What the heck? How can a freelancer get a deal that big? Miyako suddenly shouts at me. What the heck is with this person? It's thanks to the trust I gained in my previous company. Thanks to that, I now have an office and employees. Then, I'll break up with Koma. Can we get back together? Um, what? What in the world is she saying? She's married and have a baby in her belly. And now, she's saying she wants to get back with me? Honestly, you know, I quit my job after I got married and had a baby, but Koma's salary hasn't changed at all, and life is hard. Hey, please? We were dating once, right? I mean, or you can just help me a bit financially. What the heck? I'm more dismayed than angry. I'm sick. Just so sick of the woman in front of me. You know what? I... Just as I was about to say my next words. Hey, Sen. I'm here. Sorry I'm late. Just in time, I introduce her to the bitch. She's Shizuku Hakoishi. She's my fiance, and she came to my parents' house today to say hello. What? Shizuku was called to the office for an urgent matter, so I was waiting for her. So, who is this person? Um, my ex-girlfriend. Oh, really? Nice to meet you. I'm Shizuku Hakoishi. Wow, you're pregnant. Congratulations. Shizuku gave an innocent smile to Miyako, who had an evil expression until now, and... Uh, uh, Suddenly, she started running away. Um, a pregnant woman shouldn't be doing that. Uh, what's wrong with her? Isn't it dangerous if she suddenly starts running? Uh, <laughs> she probably felt so bad about herself seeing your innocent smile. It seems her own words and actions made herself feel like an evil person. Then I introduced Shizuku to my parents. My name is Shizuku Hakoishi. Nice to meet you. I have come to visit you to tell you that I am engaged to him. On this day, we were one step closer to marriage. On the other hand, Miyako, who ran away from us. Hey, I'm back. Heh heh heh. I bought some good sake on the way back. Let's drink it together. Hello? How can I possibly drink? I'm pregnant. Are you doing that on purpose or something? And stop wasting your money. You don't get paid much. And yet, you're acting like an elite? What an idiot. Heh, <laughs> screw you. You were the one calling yourself an elite when you were not. You didn't even graduate from a good university. And your job was just a receptionist at a small company. I was fooled. You just wanted to be a parasite for an educated elite like me. Huh? 
I wish you could be as successful as Sen. I'm the one who was fooled. A big ugly fight had broken out without my knowledge. But more hardship continues for these two. Wait, wait, fired? Well, why would I, a highly educated elite, be fired? Giving discounts and signing contracts without permission. Always violating orders and no matter how many times I warned you, you never stopped. We have given you so many chances, but you have not improved and have only caused harm to the company. Therefore, we have determined that it is appropriate to dismiss you in accordance with the employment regulations. On that day, Koma Tanaichi was fired from the company. Finally, I was able to fire that useless guy. What a long battle it was. She sighs at her usual family restaurant after work. I was called to listen to her complaints. Good job. There are some crazy people in this world, huh? I know, right? I've learned that an incompetent worker who boasts that they're a well-educated elite is the most troublesome. Whoa! I never thought someone like Koma exists other than him! Neither Shizuku nor I had any idea that the person we were talking about was someone we both knew. By the way, where shall we have our wedding? What are we going to do with each other's company after we get married? Why don't we take our time to decide? There's no need to rush. What? But we're both busy, and we have a lot of decisions to make, don't we? But, to think that I would meet someone like her after being dumped by Miyako, I suddenly thought about that. And this is after story. I got rejected again. How many companies has this been? Why don't you try smaller companies? Just get a job, you useless little crap! Shut up! I'm an educated elite! I can't work for anything but a big company! Miyako and Koma are now living in poverty in a cheap apartment. Me and Shizuku got married. The wedding ceremony was blessed by everyone. And my company became a subsidiary of Shizuku's company. I'll have to discuss and decide with my wife what to do from now on. While many things are changing, some things have remained the same. After all, it's more relaxing to work here, isn't it? We're still working together in the small office. I think about it from time to time. If I hadn't decided to start my own business, I would have never met Shizuku. Fate has a way of working things out, doesn't it? Unconsciously, I was just saying that out loud. Ten years. If you think about a human's lifespan, it's a long time. The younger you are, the more precious that time is. So, this reunion was from time we had thought we had lost. Long time no see. Us, um, do you remember? <laughs> My memory's a little foggy too. It, it's been ten years since then. Uh, sorry, I'm married now. The ex-boyfriend runs away as if he had seen a ghost. I wonder why this happened. To explain that, we need to go back ten years. Hey, good morning, you two! Going to school together? You guys are close. Tsukuyo Takanabe and Haruna Mimitsu. They had started dating a week earlier. Jeez, don't show off first thing in the morning, it's hot outside! Hiyori Ichitana said with a smile, and me, Masaki Nango. We've known these four since junior high, and we were close friends. That was, until that time. A few days later, I would be shaken to my core. What's this? What is this? Haruna was on the ground, and someone smiling with a metal rod in hand. Hiyori. Oh, it's you. I didn't think you'd be the first to find out. Hiyori, did you do this? Why? <laughs> because this girl took Tsukuyo. Even though I liked him? Why did this happen? I ask weakly, and she doesn't answer me. The girl survived, but won't wake up. We've done what we could. Honestly, we're not sure if she'll wake up. Hiyori Ichitana was, of course, arrested. And Tsukuyo and I... How dare you! 
You're Haruna's boyfriend. Why didn't you even go and see her? Shut up. I... I... Have my reasons, you idiot. I'm scared. For Haruna. I... I... The relationship between the four of us would suddenly end in this terrible way. A long time has passed since then. Hey, Haruna. It's been ten years. Wake up already. You've overslept quite a bit. These past ten years, she hasn't opened her eyes. She's become what they call a vegetable. Tsukuyo became a stranger and didn't come to see her even once. As for Hiyori... I liked Tsukuyo. I liked him, I liked him, I liked him! And that was taken from me! At first, I told her to break up with him, but I exploded! I didn't mean to! There was a metal rod and... Hiyori was arrested for attempted murder. She was given about two years for it. After she got out, I heard through the grapevine that she was married to Tsukuyo, but they don't have any kids. Apparently, every month she sends Haruna money for her hospital bills. The other day, they tried a treatment that sent electric pulses to her brain, but that still didn't wake her up. But, I won't give up. If I give up, Haruna will truly be alone. So, two days ago, someone in purchasing was like, Is there anything old that you like replaced? And my manager said, The woman in this office. And instantly the workplace froze over. In the end, he got his butt whooped by the woman in the office. And he had to get on his knees to apologize. <laughs> That's... Ter terrible. Huh? I heard a familiar voice. When I looked at her face, her eyes met, and it was weak. But she definitely laughed. Good morning. Haruna, you, you, you wake up. A feeble voice that was barely there. But in that moment, she had woken up. After that, the doctors were called. Tests were done, and rehab started. The days were busy. Haruna had lost her parents in an accident, and she was raised by her grandparents. But in these ten years, her grandfather had passed away. Her grandmother wasn't doing so well, and lived in a home. Her uncle acted as her guardian. When I told them, everyone was happy. I went to your grandpa's grave to tell him too. I caused a lot of trouble. It's not your fault, alright? That was... Hiyori. Yeah... Honestly, my memory is unclear. When I try to remember, it gets foggy and my head starts to hurt. She said the same thing to the police. The incident was 10 years ago, and the criminal was caught. So, the police had asked her just in case. Uh, my bad. Let's change the subject. A few months later, she finished rehab and was allowed to be discharged. Thinking back on these ten years, it was like a dream. Are you okay? Walk slowly. You're probably not back to full strength. You're right. Sorry to cause you trouble. All of it. Never stopped talking to me while I was sleeping. Oh, you. Were you awake? Yeah. It was pitch black. And I was floating around vaguely like a jellyfish. My body wouldn't move. I couldn't speak. I didn't even really know what I was thinking about. Is that what vegetables feel like? But, I could hear voices. Masaki-kun, your voice. Graduation, going to university, getting a job, there's a crazy manager. 
I hear bits and then it fades. Those were all things I had talked about to Haruna in her hospital room. I'm happy that my voice reached her. This is it. I showed her to my apartment. She has no job or parents. Her grandmother's in a home. At the very least, she needs somewhere to live after leaving the hospital. Sorry, you moved just for me, right? Yeah, it was a small one-room apartment. I thought it was a good opportunity to move. So, don't worry. At night, after dinner, I told Haruna I was going to the konbini. Please, I hope you didn't change your number. I took my phone out of my pocket and tapped on a number I haven't called in a while. Hey, Masaki. Long time. Yeah, long time, Tsukuyo. That's right, I called Tsukuyo Takanabe. He was once my friend. I was relieved that Tsukuyo answered the phone and went to a nearby park. I sat on a bench and said to him, Tsukuyo, I'll come right out and say it. Haruna woke up. Um... Can you meet with her? Haruna, she's alone. No way I won't. I'm married to Hiyori right now. How are you saying I should go see her? Of course he wouldn't. He had hung up on me. And rather than being angry, I was sad. Our school days were good times. Oh, welcome back. When I got back, Haruna was wearing an apron and had a bright expression. Hear me out. I think it's good. I can still do pretty good after 10 years. Well, for me it's only been 6 months. Hey, what's wrong, Masaki? <laughs> huh? Wait, Masaki. Why are you crying? Did something happen? Couldn't stop crying. Haruna's smiling face was... Just so sad to me. I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, <laughs> we kind of look like a married couple right now. I'm embarrassed. I'm making Haruna feel awkward. Um, Haruna? Is there something you want to do? You left the hospital for the first time in 10 years. You can see what's changed. I asked her to change the subject. is more advanced. I feel like the city hasn't changed much. More than that, I want to see Tsukuyo-kun and Hiyori-chan. I think the people are the ones who changed the most. <laughs> I wonder what kind of adults they've become. Haruna doesn't know the two of them as they are now. Or that Hiyori had tried to end Haruna's life. Because her memory is vague. She doesn't have those feelings towards her. But I... Then, let's go see them. Our best friends. I stretched out my hand. Am I smiling? Yeah. Thanks, Masaki-kun. No matter what happens, I'll protect you. I called Tsukuyo many times and finally succeeded in catching him. He didn't ignore my calls, so he must have had some thoughts of his own. Hey, Masaki. I haven't seen you since high school graduation. About eight years? That's right. Uh, where's Hiyori? She's not here? It's just me. She says she can't face you. So, what's up? Oh... Well, you know, right? As I spoke, Haruna came out. In an instant, the blood drained from Tsukuyo's face. Haruna? You... you really woke up! Long time. Us... um... do you remember? <laughs> My memory's a little foggy too. It's been ten years since then. Uh, sorry, I'm married now. Oh, hey! When Tsukuyo saw Haruna's face, he ran away as if he had seen a ghost. Of course we've broken up. It's been ten years. That's long. Haruna, 
I am happy that you woke up. I squeezed out the words that I could. I could never understand Haruna's loneliness or sadness. Um, I'm sorry, but just seeing Tsukio's face is... Oh, my head hurts. Hey, Haruna, are you okay? I thought she had suddenly clutched her head when she fell down and writhed. I didn't know what to do. Help me, Masaki-kun, help! I called an ambulance, and Haruna was taken to the hospital. They didn't find anything wrong with her. Dissociative amnesia. This occurs when trauma or stress causes you to forget bad memories. I presume that she tried to remember something nasty, and it was a trigger. Well, psychiatry is outside of my jurisdiction. All I can say is... That something you want to forget might be better off forgotten. You should stay by her side. The doctor in charge of Haruna left the room. Try to remember something nasty. Haruna had to stay overnight, so I walked the dark streets home. Hiyori tried to kill Haruna. Tsukuyo was standoffish. For Haruna, it must be a lot of stress. Stay by her side. You don't have to tell me. Sorry to cause you trouble again. Haruna was discharged the next afternoon. When I visited her in the morning, she was awake, so I went to work and picked her up on the way back. No, it's okay. Think about yourself first. Um, first, you won't see Tsukuyo and them anymore, okay? This is how it has to be. And, Haruna, you have to get back into society. So, you should get a job. What? As soon as I said it, Haruna made a hilarious face out of shock. Oh, what's with that face? Uh, I'm 27 and I haven't ever worked before. I didn't even graduate high school. I mean, I guess. It's no different than a recluse getting back into it. Well, good luck. Am I entering the super hard mode of life? We had that exchange, but Haruna was a hard worker. The next week, she applied for a day job for an event and started to work. Well, welcome. She wants to get licensed and someday wants to go back to high school. It's like she went from sophomore year to a 27-year-old. I'm sure she'll have a tough time. I'll support you, so you can do it, Haruna. Haruna had started working toward getting back into the real world. Haruna, Haruna woke up. I, I. It's okay. I was arrested and I paid as much of Haruna's hospital fees as I could. You and I, I don't think we'll be forgiven for that, but... I know why you're scared, but we should be happy that Haruna woke up. Time flies, and a few months pass since Haruna's release from the hospital. Masaki-kun, what do you want for dinner? Ah, uh, we had meat yesterday, so maybe fish? Then how about white fish with vegetable sauce? We were having a random conversation. Haruna had made friends at her part-time job, and she was getting into cooking. We were living a peaceful life. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, but tomorrow, wanna go watch a baseball game? On the way back from the supermarket, I suggested this to Haruna. Baseball? Did you always like baseball? No, no. My coworker can't go anymore, so I got tickets. I thought it would be cool to go for the experience. Oh, love Koi Dome. I've been there as a worker, but not a guest. Yeah, then let's go. The next day, we came to the Love Koi Dome. It's like a date. There are so many people. You've been here for work, right? Yeah, ushers have a lot to do and have to deal with a lot of people. 
We use the staff cafeteria, but the taste is okay. I guess it can't be helped if you're working here. There's still some time before the game, so let's go to the shop. When we entered the souvenir shop, there were original items placed neatly all around. I've never been inside the shop. Staff members can't go in unless they have business there. Well, today you're a guest. Let's enjoy ourselves. You're right. I was curious about the food in the shops. We were talking and laughing when I saw something. A bat. I haven't held one since I was a kid. I grabbed the bat that was for sale and held it up. In that moment, Haruna's eyes opened wide. She looked surprised and terrified. Uh, Haruna? Haruna had clutched her head and curled up. Haruna? I... I'm not... Yuri... That day... That day... The one who hit me... Was... Sukiyokun. What? I... She said that much and toppled over. The customers around us raised their voices. I... Did I remind her of the person with the blunt object that day when I held up this bat? It wasn't Hiyori Ichitana, but Tsukuyo Takanabe. No way, Tsukuyo. You... You were the perpetrator. It wasn't over yet. I stood motionless in front of fallen Haruna. That day, I was called out to the back of the school building after class. Um, what's wrong? There's no one around. Haruna, I like you. I always wanted to go out with you. Oh, yeah. You already told me that. So now we're going out, right? Going out? Going out, huh? That's not it. I pushed you to do it, so you're just pretending to go out with me, right? Huh? What? Tsukiyo-kun had turned around and glared at me. I'm scared. That's what I thought. You like Masaki, right? You still look at a Masaki even though you're going out with me! No, I... Shut up! I liked you, so I approached Masaki. That's right. I've always liked you! Tsukiyo ah! could pick up a metal rod that was lying around. It had been forgotten and left there after some construction. Those eyes... Those eyes were letting off something sinister. Scary? I'm scared. I'm scared. Masakun, help me. My legs don't move. My, my whole body shakes and my face twists in fear. Masaki? His name comes out first, huh? Tsukuyo had only meant to scare her, but he had done it without thinking. Hiyori stands in front of him. What are you doing? Haruna, ambulance! I... What have I done? Ugh! If you're gonna regret it, don't do it! I'll take the blame. So go! Get out of here! Hurry! So... Hiyori took the blame for it, and was arrested. Why do I know? That was because Hiyori Ichitana herself, I mean, Hiyori Takanabe called me some days later to tell me. I was almost in a car accident in middle school and Tsukiyo-kun helped me. I was grateful and I liked Tsukiyo. I'm dumb, aren't I, to take the blame. Tsukuyo's fingerprints weren't identified because the rod was covered in dirt. 
the victim was unconscious and there were no witnesses. Plus, Hiyori herself was saying she had done it. So, Hiyori was arrested and repented in his place. As a result, they shared the blame and kept paying Haruna's hospital fees to ease the feelings of regret. What have we done, the two of us? We got married and it wasn't even because of love. Just, will either of us talk about this to others? Sorry. We're the worst, huh? When Haruna opened her eyes, the first thing I felt was fear. But I was also relieved when I heard she didn't remember. We did something we can't take back. I'm really sorry. This is all I can say right now. She lowers her head, crying. Haruna looked like she didn't know what to do. Hiyori was arrested again for harboring a criminal. But she had already paid her dues, so she was exempt from serving. In reality, Hiyori didn't directly cause any harm to Haruna. So, Haruna could only be confused. In the end, Haruna didn't say anything at all. I went to go see Tsukuyo, who had been arrested because Haruna remembered. Hey, Tsukuyo. I didn't want to see you like this. Yeah, but I feel like the weight has been lifted off my heart. I caused a lot of trouble. You did. It might be ten years ago, but you are the worst. I know. I'll pay for my crimes, including the crime of running away. The true perpetrator was arrested, and the crime was solved at last. That night, we were drinking and talking seriously. I... was this how it was supposed to be? Haruna remembered, but I was the one who pushed her to tell the police. We'll never go back to the way it was ten years ago. It's okay. Tsukuyo was feeling the weight of staying silent for so long. Of course, he should be arrested and pay for his crime, and it will save him too. So, don't get down about it. Yeah, but... but... I just think if I hadn't said I'd go out with Tsukio, if I had rejected him... Haruna started to cry and talk regretfully. You're so kind even though you're the victim. Well, you don't know the outcome until it happens, right? So, people regret. So, you just have to cry about it. I see. So this is goodbye. Six months later, I bid Hiyori my final farewell. Haruna and I decided this together. <laughs> You're not gonna marry her? I'm sure she's waiting for a proposal. Oh, uh, well, when things calm down. So, I have an announcement. Haruna and I will be moving out. Haruna and I had too many sad and bitter experiences. So, we agreed to distance ourselves from that city. Haruna, we're almost there. Wake up! We got to the station and we jumped out into the city we would be living in. Let's make some good memories! Yeah... Take care of me, Masaki-kun. The ten years that were frozen in time had started to move forward. Haruna and I were taking steps forward. Let's start creating our everlasting memories. <laughs>